At the beginning of the worldwide quarantine a few months ago, hundreds of thousands of churches flocked to the internet to begin streaming their services online. Over this difficult season, I haven't spoken to a single church who hasn't seen God move through their online ministry. It's more obvious than ever, I think, that the church was never a building. We saw incredible ministry take place as God used these live streams, some pre-recorded, some live, some expertly crafted, some desperately put together. Regardless of your own hangups on how you could have personally done better, listen to me. The church thrived this season, largely in part to the incredible work of many tech and media folk out there. You help bring the gospel to millions of people every week who would not have been capable of hearing it otherwise. If you don't hear it from anybody else, and unfortunately I know many of you won't, thank you. God sees you and he's proud of you. Now, there are plenty of churches today that are still looking for ways to improve their live stream as they're beginning their re-entry into in-person Sunday morning services. There are other churches still who have yet to jump onto the live streaming bandwagon altogether. To all who are watching, welcome. We're hoping to help you out best we can. This is our ultimate guide for church live streaming on a budget in 2020. Welcome to Black Bar. Hi, I'm Caleb, and there's a lot to go over today, so we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna be following both the audio and the video signal chains all the way from source to stream. We're gonna focus primarily on budget-friendly options for churches who aren't interested in or capable of blowing 10 racks on a live stream setup. If you're looking for an all-out, top-of-the-line setup, this is probably not the video for you. But if you're interested in saving a few bucks and hopefully using a lot of the equipment you already own, stay tuned. First stop on the video chain, let's talk about your camera. There are a few questions that we've been asked more than what camera should I use for my church's live stream? The answer has always been, and will always be, it depends. First, let's talk about the cheapest of the cheap. We all have phones in our pockets. Many, many, many churches use their phones successfully to live stream their services throughout the season. It's really literally unbeatable in regards to price or performance as you already have one with you. It's gonna cost you nothing to get set up. Unfortunately, however, of course, this does come with some limitations. The largest of which is Zoom. No, not that Zoom. We've had enough of that Zoom. Camera zoom. Now just about every camera, including phone cameras, can zoom these days, but if you're going to be setting up your phone camera in the back of the sanctuary pointed towards the stage, your phone is going to have to employ a digital zoom to get a decent image. Professional, purpose-built camera lenses zoom by shifting glass and magnifying light to capture a tighter image on your camera's sensor. In contrast, a digital zoom is the equivalent to taking the full resolution image and cropping it down to get a tighter shot. Essentially, you could be taking an image that's 2,000 pixels across and only using a half or a third of it. Practically speaking, this will make a lot of your shots feel blurry or out of focus. Now, it's very possible to get a good image out of a phone, but the compromise you're going to need to make is by keeping the phone relatively close to your stage or your subject. I'm talking like 10 to 15 feet at the most. It's worth noting that for most churches with average size sanctuaries, this really isn't practical, which is where our next solution comes into play. Let's talk about traditional photo format cameras like DSLRs and SLRs. When you think of the word camera, these are likely the things that are coming to your mind. This format of camera, although originally designed for photos, have become incredibly popular video capturing machines. The video you're watching right now, along with just about every other video we've done on this channel, was shot on a Sony a7S, a member of this family. These cameras are incredibly versatile. You can get a lens for any occasion, both photo and video. It could be used to live stream your church on a Sunday morning and photograph your church's potluck on Sunday afternoon. They're relatively lightweight, portable, and immensely popular, leading to a massive supply of third-party accessories and support. If you're looking for a single camera that can do everything that you need, this is probably the best category to be looking into. However, these two do face some limitations when it comes to specifically a live streaming environment like a church service. First, and this will differ on a camera by camera basis, you'll need to make sure that the camera is able to send a clean video over HDMI or USB. 
Since most cameras aren't capable of live streaming to the internet themselves, we need to output a signal to a computer that can. Just about every camera can output the video that they're receiving, but not every camera can do that without the UI being on the screen. The shutter speed, color temperature, battery life, and recording time, all that kind of thing. There are several cameras that have that HDMI out simply for the function of monitoring, not for the function of capturing. That could also mean that, in addition to the UI being on the screen, you also get a low resolution preview image instead of the full high resolution shot. If you're going to be using a camera that you already have, or you're buying a new one in this category, you'll want to make sure that it has full, clean, high resolution video making its way through the HDMI. The second issue that you can run into when using this type of camera is that changing the exposure or the white balance or other settings can be a little bit more finicky when using a DSLR or SLR than a purpose-built production camera. When everything that you're doing is being broadcast to your audience, navigating through menus to make a quick change really isn't an option most of the time. It can be done, and there are some settings that are certainly easier to adjust than others, but this is some something to take into consideration when making a purchase decision. Lastly, just about every camera of this form factor outputs to HDMI or mini HDMI. Although this format works just fine for short cable runs and stationary cameras, the connection is far from ideal for all circumstances. In comparison to the top dog of video cables, SDI, HDMI, and especially mini HDMI, is very fragile. It doesn't take much to accidentally unplug or loosen a cable from the side of your camera as you're panning from side to side. In comparison, SDI locks itself into place every time it makes a connection. You have to twist it to undo it. In addition, even the best HDMI cables can only guarantee a quality, healthy, consistent video signal up to, I would say, about 25 feet. They're simply not built for long distance runs. Yes, there are ways to get around this. You can use repeaters or even convert the HDMI signal into something else, but every added point of a complexity is another possible point of failure. Can a DSLR or an SLR camera be used effectively in a typical live production environment? Absolutely, they can. However, they will take some extra work and possibly some extra accessories to get them to work. However, the benefit of putting up with this extra complexity is the flexibility of using these cameras as photo cameras as well. And that is a big deal for a lot of churches. Lastly, let's talk about purpose-built production cameras. These are the cameras that were built from the ground up for live streaming. Just about every setting and function can be accessed externally without diving into the menus. They usually have multiple options for video and audio out, including SDI and XLR. You can buy cameras with built-in lenses or cameras that can take a variety of lenses for a variety of purposes. Many of these cameras also allow you the option to remotely control things like focus and zoom and exposure from controls on your tripod or even all the way up in your control booth. These cameras were built from the ground up specifically specifically for the purpose of live streaming, and they offer very little compromise in doing so, except for maybe the price. These things are expensive. You can easily spend well into the tens of thousands of dollars getting a decent camera and lens and accessory set needed to make these cameras work. There are definitely absolutely some cheaper options. Blackmagic has been very disruptive in the past couple of years with some of their newer options. Sony and Canon both have decent, relatively budget-friendly options if you're looking to use this form factor. Now, if you're looking for a specific recommendation on any camera in any form factor, there are literally dozens and dozens of options that are worth your time. However, there are dozens and dozens of factors that are worth considering dozens and dozens more than I'd like to cover in this video. If you're looking for specific camera recommendations for your unique setup, or if you'd like to find out if the camera you already own will do the job, I highly would suggest checking out our Discord. We have an entire team of certified pros that are available 24 seven, happy to help you make the right decision for your church. Totally, absolutely, and forever free of charge. There is no such thing as a one size fits all solution. Let us help you find out what works for your church. All right, let's do a quick lightning round on camera tips before we move on. Number one, check out the used market. Technology, and specifically cameras for whatever reason, depreciate in value much faster than they depreciate in power. When we bought the camera that we're filming with right now, the Sony a7S, it was worth around $2,500. That was four years ago, I believe. Today, you could pick them up used for $400. Does this look like a $400 camera to you? Because it doesn't to me. It's easy to get caught up in all of the bells and whistles of the newest options available, but if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, I would highly suggest checking out the used market. 
Second, the best camera in the world will always look like trash if what you're feeding it looks like trash. And no, that's not in reference to your pastor's quarantine haircut. Lighting is the single most important factor in video quality. I would say miles more important than the camera that you're using in the first place. We put together a video all about the basics of lighting, which you can check out right here for more information. Lastly, invest in a decent tripod, specifically if you're gonna be planning on moving, panning, or tilting throughout. I know the nicer ones seem expensive, but it's hard to communicate the value of a good fluid head tripod until you've used one. The nicest shot in the world will still look amateur if it shakes every time you pan to the side. We'll link a good, affordable option down in the description below. All right, now that we've covered cameras, it's time to talk about the next step in the signal chain, running the line. It's very likely that you set up your camera or cameras quite a ways away from your streaming computer. You might be wondering why Best Buy isn't selling a 300 foot HDMI cable to plug everything in. It's because they don't exist, but I hope we can get you set up regardless. If you're using a phone camera, we are unfortunately going to be limited to the longest charging cable you can find that connects to your computer. Yes, it is technically possible to stream video over Wi-Fi to a local computer from a phone using apps like DroidCam, OBS Cam, or Wirecast Go, but we have found these options to be relatively unreliable, laggy, and inconsistent especially in areas with weaker connection. Using NDI, a different lag-free protocol for sending video over Wi-Fi is another option, but again, it's only reliable if you have quality Wi-Fi signal that's relatively free of other traffic. Can it work? Yes. But if all possible, if you can use a cable, I would highly recommend it. If you're using a DSLR or SLR with HDMI or mini HDMI out, you're going to have a different, although very solvable problem. Like we said before, HDMI is only capable of transmitting a video signal up to 25 feet or so. Yes, there are technically cables that you can buy that run in excess of 50 feet, but runs over 25 feet are generally not recommended. The video signal can become distorted or choppy or even not send altogether. To counteract this, you'll need to use an adapter to carry video over longer signals. I'd highly recommend converting that HDMI signal into CAT6 using an adapter like this, link in the description. CAT6 has virtually no signal degradation over long runs and can be easily converted back into whatever you need on the other end. Now, if you're using a camera with SDI out, you're in luck. SDI is more than capable of running video signal over long distances, anywhere from 85 to 2000 feet, depending on the video data transfer speed that you need. The lower the resolution and the frame rate of the video, i.e. the smaller the video, the further the signal can travel. Ignoring some extreme cases, for the most part, if you you pick up a cable that's long enough to get you from A to B, you're probably gonna be set to go. Now that we got that signal to the computer or interface we're gonna be streaming with, you'll need to get that signal into the device itself. First, however, we're gonna to need to make a decision on whether we're taking the video signals in directly through your computer or going through a video switcher first. The pro con list is pretty simple here. The cheapest option by far is gonna be going straight into your computer. You can switch back and forth between different shots and angles if you have multiple cameras, but you will have to do the switching with a mouse and keyboard. It does take a little while to set up and honestly, it's not quite as intuitive, but it is absolutely possible and there's a lot of churches who do it effectively every week. However, if you have a little bit of extra room in the budget, a video switcher is a very intuitive tool that lets you switch between multiple video signals at a press of a button instead of a point and a click. They can help you move faster, make faster decisions, and just about every church I've seen that's really serious about live streaming uses a video switcher instead of a software solution. Do you need one? Absolutely not, but it's certainly a nice to have. If you're looking for a specific video switcher, again, I'm going to plug the Discord for personalized suggestions. That being said, we have found that the Blackmagic A10 Mini is an incredibly affordable, incredibly powerful little tool that will serve most churches very well. It can take up to four video signals in through HDMI on the back, and it has many of the features you would find in a board four times its price. We will link it down in the description below. Now, just as a little caveat, some of you might be thinking about using the HDMI switchers that you can buy for your TV to switch between your Xbox or your PlayStation or your Blu-ray player or whatever. We would really recommend you avoid using these if possible. Yes, they're cheap, but all of these devices don't transition or cut cleanly between sources, inserting a few black frames in between a cut. Sometimes they'll even actually display what source they're on at a time, giving you ugly UI elements on the frame that you're sending. It also makes it impossible to preview shots before you cut. 
an altogether very dangerous affair. If you can help it, I would avoid using these types of switchers. Now, you may have realized already that this isn't as simple as just plugging in cables into the back of your computer or your switcher. I have yet to buy a new computer with an SDI port in the back. To do this, we're gonna need yet another converter. If you're going into a video switcher, you'll just need to convert the video signal into whatever input format your switcher needs. A quick Google search from and to whatever you need should give you a ton of really simple options. If you're going into a computer, you're likely going to need to convert whatever signal you're using into USB. There are many video devices that allow you to do this, but we have personally recommended the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini and the Elgato Camlink Capture Card for those on a budget. Quick pro tip, if you're trying to get something set up really quickly this Sunday and you're having difficulty tracking either of these down in time, I would try hitting up anybody in your congregation that's really into video games. The Elgato Camlink specifically is very popular for gamers who want to capture footage of them playing. If you ask nicely and take care of their equipment, they might be willing to let you borrow it until they get their own interface. Now, plug your video inputs into your switcher or video interface and then plug the output of either of them into your streaming computer. Now, before we start getting into the software, we're gonna need to cover the other equally, if not more important half of your live stream, the wonderful world of audio. Now, I've said it multiple times in this video and multiple times in other videos, but there is no such thing as a one size fits all solution for any church. Anybody who says otherwise is either lying to you or trying to sell you something. That being said, I can't think of a single scenario where I would honestly recommend using the audio from a built-in mic on your camera for your church's live stream, regardless of the camera. I have honestly never heard it sound good. If at all possible, I would highly, highly, highly recommend alternatively getting an output from the soundboard you use on Sunday mornings to your live stream instead. The reverberation of the room, the fluctuating volume of your services, even the capabilities of the mic you're trying to use, even the best of mics, is going to make it nearly impossible to get a quality, consistent, listenable sound to your stream. I can't even begin to explain how important this is to the watchability of your stream. I've made this illustration before, but I would much rather watch a stream that looks like this and sounds like this than one that looks like this but sounds like this. Now, taking a direct copy of whatever you're sending to your sanctuary absolutely can work and is miles ahead of abusing a built-in microphone. But there are additional steps you can take for a similar jump in quality that will cost most churches nothing outside of some time and some practice. Most modern soundboards are capable of outputting a separate, independent mix from the main output. These are called submixes. When used properly, they can allow you to use a single board to get a good mix for your sanctuary and an entirely different separate good mix for your live stream at the same time. Now you might be wondering, and it's a fair question, why you would want a separate mix at all. If it sounds good in the house, shouldn't it sound good on the stream as well? If only it was that easy. In truth, the speakers you use in your sanctuary, the placement of those speakers, the shape of your room, the amount of people in your room, even the placement of your sound booth can have drastic, dramatic effects on the perception of the sound that you hear. Front of house engineers need to take all of this into account when getting a good mix for that specific room. Taking that same mix and playing it online without any adjustment will often lead to a very thin sounding product. Large reverberating rooms help quite a bit to thicken out the sound. Without that space, your mix will suffer quite a bit when heard through a set of phone speakers or headphones or even a basic living room TV setup. Now, getting a sub mix is really just as easy as throwing on a pair of headphones to isolate the sound you're getting and using a mix using the aux channels instead of using the normal faders. Your board will almost certainly have a separate output port on the back for the sub mix, which you can then run directly into your streaming computer. If you really want to dial in an excellent mix, however, there are some more involved options that can really help you perfect your sound. Setting up a completely separate board specifically for your live stream mix outside of your sanctuary in a controlled studio environment is just about the best possible solution, but the time, the know-how, the resources, and the money required to set it up is gonna be out of reach for most churches. Instead, sending the individual outputs of the board to a computer running a DAW like Pro Tools, Logic, or Ableton, and mixing there is a great, somewhat more affordable option for churches with the space and the software already 
to make it happen. I know we're kind of flying through the audio segment here. There is a ton to cover, but if you want to go more in detail about the entire signal chain from mic to stream, we have a video right here that takes you through the whole process. Check that out if you're looking for more information. Now, just like with a video input, you can't usually just plug in an XLR to the back of the computer. You're going to need to use an audio interface to adapt the XLR or occasionally TRS cable to a USB cable for your computer. There are dozens of options available, but we've been recommending the Focusrite Scarlet. It's a great little interface that'll do just about everything you need in most scenarios. We'll have a link in the description. Again, if you don't have an audio interface and you need to get up and running quickly, reach out to musicians in your congregation, specifically guitarists or vocalists. These interfaces are integral for any musician who wants to record themselves at home. Any of them that have done recording almost certainly have one of these. Again, if you ask nicely and treat their equipment well, they're likely going to be willing to let you use it until you get your own. Now, we've got both the video and audio signal into the computer, but what about that computer? Will any computer work? No, no, no. Nope, nope, nope. Unfortunately, capturing and streaming video is a very intensive task to ask of any computer. Most of the problems I've helped troubleshoot on stream quality come from an underpowered computer being asked to perform miracles. This is a quick cheat sheet for what we've been recommending for a minimum setup for live streaming. If this is all Latin to you, do not worry. You can find out the specs on a PC you already own by heading to Settings, System, and About. Compare it with this list over here to see if you have the specs that you need. If you're running on a Mac, simply click the Apple menu and head to About This Mac. Again, compare your specs to this list to see if you have the juice. If you don't, it might be time for a computer upgrade to start streaming. Again, you can use the same cheat sheet when shopping for a new machine, but if you're looking for a second opinion or you're feeling overwhelmed at all, don't worry about it. Several of the certified pros on Discord, including myself, have plenty of experience specking and even building PCs themselves. We would be happy to make sure that you make the right decision for your church without spending unnecessary money in the first place, which these companies will try to get you to do. Also, super quick note, this is an ethernet cable. If you hear nothing else in this whole video, hear me on this. Do not rely on a Wi-Fi connection for your streaming computer. Just don't do it. Plugging in directly to your router with an ethernet cable will always lead to faster speeds, higher bandwidth, and a more consistent connection. This fix alone will solve many stream quality issues for those who are still running on Wi-Fi. Now it's finally time to start talking about the software. There are several choices out there, but in my humble opinion, there is nothing that quite beats the versatility, the support, and the price, given that it's free, of OBS. We've helped literally hundreds of churches stream their services every Sunday using this program absolutely for free. It can take in as many video signals as you can send it. It can switch between cameras. It can apply graphics. It can record and stream simultaneously, use transitions, just about anything you would need. We'll have a download link to OBS down in the description below. Yes, it's kind of a sketchy website. Trust me, the software is worth it. Once you install it and boot it up, you'll have to go through an auto setup wizard. So let's fly through this. Hit yes optimize it for streaming, then set the base resolution to either 1920 by 1080 if you have a reliable, speedy internet, or 1280 by 720 if you don't. Next, you'll have to pick your streaming platform. We'll cover YouTube first, then Facebook. Make sure you're logged into your YouTube account in your browser and hit the link button next to the stream key in the OBS window. This will bring you to a new page in your browser. Hit get started and scroll down until you find your stream name or key. It will be censored. It is very important that you do not share this key with anyone else as anyone with your key can live stream to your account. Copy the code from YouTube and paste it into the box in OBS. After a few tests, OBS should be ready to go. Hit apply settings. Now let's go through the process for Facebook. Switch the service to Facebook and hit the link button next to the stream key in the OBS window. This will bring you to a new page in your browser. Hit create live stream. Scroll down to the get started menu and click use a persistent stream key. Then copy the stream key from the live API menu on the right. Paste that into the box in OBS. After a few tests, OBS should be ready to go. Hit apply settings. Great. 
Now let's configure your video and audio inputs. By default, OBS creates a scene for you to start placing inputs into. Head to Sources, then click Video Capture Device. Create a new device and hit OK. Find the device in the dropdown and set the preset to whatever resolution you set during the setup process. Hit OK and you should have a video signal. If needed, scale the video to match the size of your frame, then I'd suggest locking it into place to avoid accidentally moving it during your stream. Repeat this for every video source or camera you plan to use. Next, head to the audio mixer. Click the gear icon next to your input and select your input device from the menu. Send a signal from your board to the computer to make sure that it's receiving a signal. Make sure that it's not peaking and you should be ready to go. Now, this is the very basics of getting OBS set up and running for your live stream. I know it feels like a lot, but this program is capable of running graphics and slides, lower third lyrics, color correction, even streaming to multiple locations at the same time. In an effort to not make this video four hours long, I'll point you to a video we already did on the subject right up here. I'd highly suggest checking it out if you want to get the most out of this program. Now at this point, you should be ready to go live. Both Facebook and YouTube have settings to configure in their own streaming menus to set the title, description, or whatever. Before you start streaming, hit the Start Streaming button in OBS when you're ready, and make sure that you have someone monitoring the stream at all times. If you're streaming to Facebook, you'll actually need to hit the Go Live button in the left hand corner of the screen to make your live stream visible to your audience. And with that, you should be live. You did it. You finally arrived. There are absolutely, positively, 1001 ways to improve and expound upon what we've talked about today. But if you're getting set up for the very first time, this should be enough to get you there. Again, if you run into any specific questions or issues, be sure to jump on the Black Bar Discord. I am there along with many other people way more knowledgeable than me on this topic. Many of them helped to write the script for this video right now. Thank you guys. We are always online and happy to help get you set up and answer your questions to get you streaming on Sunday. We are all in this together. And with everything, continue to be safe, continue to bless the kingdom with your gifts, and continue to thank God for the opportunity to be using them. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Black Bar. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the Black Bar podcast released every week where we go even deeper into the stuff we talk about in these videos. As I've said before, make sure to join the Black Bar Discord to connect with others going through the same issues that you are. And please be sure to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more from us. We'll see you next week. <sighs> that video is so long.